unfortunately this viewer only allows me 10 minutes to show this how-to video so if you'd like to see the full high-resolution version of the video please go to my blog at www.sheltonblog.com and you'll find this video and more under the SharePoint tag. Let's go ahead and start by creating a new project here. So I'm using Visual Studio 2008, so I'll start a sequential uh, SharePoint workflow on Office 2007. I'll call this a basic SharePoint workflow project. The the OK button to start the wizard. The Visual Studio uh, project wizard wants to know which uh, SharePoint list, SharePoint site I want to uh, add this uh, workflow to. I have a uh, site called Screencast. It's a uh, team site. So I'll go ahead and add it to that. And it'll ask me which list I want to associate this with. I'm going to use the incoming resume uh, the list on that particular site. And then I want my workflow to be started manually or uh, whenever an item is uh, loaded. In my workflow uh, project here, I'm going to go ahead and start roughing out the workflow uh, by laying out the activities. And the uh, first activity I'm going to use is the Create Task Activity, uh, which is a new SharePoint activity. It allows you to define the uh, task itself. And then on, after that, I'm going to lay out a uh, on workflow, on task created activity. That is the, ta uh, the activity that once uh, the workflow hits that, it will actually take to the one defined by the Create Task and then uh, actually uh, create the task on the SharePoint site. And then after that, I want to uh, monitor the task to let me know when the task has been completed. So I'm going to use a, a while loop. So I'll go ahead and drop the while loop here. And I'm going to call that one while task not completed. And then after that, uh, I will drop into the while loop a uh, task change activity. And what that will do is, uh, on task change, what that will do is whenever the task uh, changes uh, values like the status or percentage done or what have you, it will actually fire this particular event. And then the last uh, activity I'll put on is a uh, task completed uh, or complete task activity. And that is the one that uh, when the workflow hits this point in the, uh, in the process, it will actually tell SharePoint that the task has been completed. Now we have to set some of these task properties to get rid of some of the uh, error boxes here. So the first one I'm going to do is set the create task property. And what it's waiting for is a uh, correlation token. And the correlation token is going to be different for a task than it is for the workflow. The workflow has a correlation token as well, as you can see here. Um, but it, the tasks have to have a different token than that of the workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and create one called task token. And then it's going to want to know the owner activity, which in this case I'll just make it the workflow itself. So now I have a task token. The next thing that the create task needs is actually a task ID. Each task has to have a unique ID um, within the SharePoint uh, workflow system. So to get a, a task ID, which is a GUID, I'm going to go to my tools menu here. I'm going to use a create GUID. Um, grab a GUID that, uh, that it creates for me, so I'll copy it and then I'll go ahead and paste it right here inside of my um, property and then the last thing I'm going to set is the task properties. The task properties is an object that will hold the, uh, the individual fields within the task and their values amongst other things. So I'm going to go ahead and create one I'm going to have it bind to a new member and I'm just going to leave it with that name and I'm going to have it created as a field. Okay, now the on task created uh, activity, again, it is the one that once we've defined the task here, uh, will actually tell SharePoint to create the task on the server for us. So all I have to do for this guy is it, uh, set the correlation token. It needs to be set to the same one that the create task was. So I drop this down, and there's our task token. And then the next thing it needs to do is be hook, hooked up to our task. So it needs a task ID as well. So I'll go ahead and browse for the task ID. And you see our create task activity sitting here. When I open it up, it has a field called task ID. And that's what I'm going to set the on task created to. Go ahead and set the uh, while condition for the task not completed. And I basically want this to loop uh, picking up changes on the task all the way until the task completed equals true. And once the task completed equals true, I want to drop through. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the condition for this while loop to uh, 
to watch a uh, class variable that I'm going to create. So let me go ahead and switch over to code view here. Let me go ahead and put a uh, class level variable. We'll copy and paste. Uh, shall go ahead and create it. So it'll be private boolean. Call it task completed. And we're going to go ahead and start that off at false. Okay, switch it back to the uh, workflow here. And I'm going to set the uh, while loop. I'm going to give it a condition to run until, and that condition will be a declared a rule condition. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to the condition name or condition of uh, while this task completed value. is not equal to true. So that'll be basically that this will loop through until the task completed equals true. Or while the task is not equal to true, however you want to look at it. So I'll call it the task condition. I'll call it task completed condition. Alright, now that I have that set, let's go ahead and tell the uh, on task change property which uh, what value it needs to track. And so basically I'm going to tie it back to the create task and on task created uh, events here. Again, this defines the task, this actually creates it, this will modify it, and this will uh, tell SharePoint when it's completed. Alright, so on this property I need to set the correlation token just like the other ones. So I'm going to set it to the task token as well. It needs a uh, task ID, so I'm going to set it to the exact same one as the uh, created task of, uh, activity. And then it has before and after task properties, which I'll get into here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and bind them to a couple of properties. So this will be bound to that particular property, and the after prop properties need to be bound as well. By the way, if you don't bind these properties, even if you don't plan to use them, uh, when you go and try to compile and deploy, you will actually get an error. Okay, the last one is the task completed or complete task activity. I want to also uh, connect that one to the uh, the other chain of tasks here. So it needs to be on the exact same task uh, token. So I'm going to switch that one to the task token. It needs to be hooked to the ID of the uh, task that was created so that it knows which one to complete at the end. So I'll give it that. And then that's pretty much it. Time to drop in the code that actually defines the task. So what I'll do is I'll double click on the create task activity here. It'll drop me in the code view. It makes a, a little room here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and paste in the code. I've already typed it just so that I can save time of typing and explain it. And so uh, for the create task one property uh, activity, so that's this guy here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, task properties uh, object. It has a, it exposes to me assigned to, so I'm going to assign it to a specific uh, uh, user, in this case the administrator. I can set the task title, description, due date, so I'm setting the due date to now plus seven days. I can set the email body, this will be sent to the user's Outlook, and then I can decide whether or not I want to actually send that email or not uh, using the uh, send email notification and setting that to true. Just so that you can see, there's a bunch of other uh, tasks that I could also, I mean properties that I could also set as well. And so this is the complete list of, of those tasks, or those property values I should say. Alright, so let me go ahead and delete that.